Now, ladies and gentlemen, Anastasia Miller, Jared Brown, now they're going to be talking about a spirituous journey. Let's give them a warm welcome, please. Good morning. Wow, Good morning. so many people up so early. It's but been, what, four or five years on this book? Five. five. Usually we do them <laughs> in about a month. Every single time we said, okay, well, eventually we're going to have to write another book, kept on saying, well, we've done rum, we've done cachaça, uh, why don't we just take everything that we've ever tucked away in a notebook? It never really came together until no. one afternoon I went into a store called Kitchen Arts and Letters in New York, run by a former editor of... He was with Crown Publishing. Yes. He said, somebody needs to just do a, a giant book of drink, a history of alcohol. The word alcohol originates from the old Arabic alkool, not yeah. alcohol, al -cool. which alcohol was the eye makeup. Alkool yeah. meant the genie in the bottle or that which takes away the mind. Isn't that lovely? I like that. The genie that takes your brain away. That's about right, actually. <laughs> What's important about bar show, especially the London bar show, it's a time when people can get together learn from the experts about new things. It isn't just about one new product. It's about what sort of demonstrations the experts are presenting so people freshen up what they're doing, maybe get inspired to do something a little bit more. That's what our show is about. During the plagues, especially 1347 to 1350, mm. uh, doctors Good would year. wear these looked like a parrot's beak filled with juniper. People would drape themselves in garlands of juniper, wrap their houses in juniper, bathe in juniper, eat juniper, drink juniper elixirs. They wanted to ward off the bad smells that they thought caused the plague. I think it was about nine months ago, I woke up one morning and Googled juniper flea repellent. 150 naturopathic sites pop up saying, oh, juniper, excellent flea repellent. <laughs> So, in truth, it drink did, gin, you won't get fleas. It did work <laughs> because it was the fleas that carried the parasites that caused the plague. Yeah, that's simple so enough. So, they didn't know why it worked, but they knew it worked. And that developed a European taste for juniper that translated into a taste for gin. I was inspired into the business by Dale DeGroff, as so many other uh, people in the industry were, when he stopped me as a waiter at the Rainbow Room and said, hey you, you want to see how to flame a twist? In the late 1600s, the Spanish were calling the combination of aguardiente, azúcar, limón y agua, which is aguardiente, rum, lime, sugar, and water. Does sound familiar? <laughs> a bebida inglesa, an English drink. I think we now have fairly conclusive proof about the story of Richard Drake, one of the crew on Sir Francis Drake's ship making him this drink. Almost conclusive, almost. The Spanish reiterated that in books in the 1730s, 1750s, and 1790s, in fact. Was the daiquiri an original creation in 1898? No, <laughs> I've found that recipe for a couple of hundred years. Yeah, there you go. The man who inspired me to get into this business was a legendary head barman of the American bar at the Soy Hotel, Peter Dorelli. He was the most charming, always made you feel wanted. If you felt sad, he'd make you feel glad to be alive. And that, to me, is the ultimate in bartendership. Everyone has pretty much accepted that the original pina colada was simply rum and pineapple. And some people have traced that back all the way to 1905. I'd say these people don't read Charles Dickens. Because if you read the Pickwick's papers, you'll find him talking about not the pina colada, because that was a Spanish word. Dickens was English. He was talking about pineapple rum. And he was talking about someone making it through three pineapple rums and then having dinner so that he could work up an appetite for more of them in 1836. The bar show is essential to the industry because it provides a forum for sharing knowledge. The internet has boosted global communication to an extent, but it's faceless. 
the bar show provides a context for contact and for just wonderful shared knowledge and that's what's happening here in all fields of the industry but it's taking place here today in london traced it back a little further found recipes for that in uh, a recipe book from 1817 from london and then found evidence that it was also a very popular drink in marseille at that time so don't tell me it's a french drink no i haven't found that conclusively it was one side or the other on that one Unlike Tea Punch, which actually gets his name as a contraction from Petit Punch, or Little Punch, and what made it little was the exclusion of one ingredient. They dropped the T, T-E-A, out of it, and it became T-T-I. We've rolled out quite a few surprises for them, uh, from the fact that distillation was not born in Egypt, but was born long before then uh, in further in the east, in China, that uh, the daiquiri was not born in 1898 in Cuba in the hands of an American, but was called an, a babida inglesa, an English drink, by the Spanish in the late 1600s. There are many more surprises, but uh, I'll save those for people who want to open the book. Will you please get off the stage? It's time to say goodnight, Gracie. I'm so glad she didn't bring the hook today, that thing hurts.